Command & Conquer's zany younger brother has returned for another go in the real-time strategy arena. The Red Alert series has long been a favorite of strategy fans thanks to a heady mix of strange story and even stranger units. This newest installment has plenty of both. A new world order awaits. <laughs> Red Alert 3 once again plums the depths of speculative fiction. In this instance, the Soviets have come up with an ambitious and obviously implausible way to deny the Western nations access to their nuclear arsenal. Build a time machine, go back in time, and assassinate Albert Einstein. Of course, anyone who's watched Heroes recently will tell you that messing with the past can lead to all kinds of unexpected consequences. Sure, there are no more nuclear bombs, and that's good, but now, a hyper-militaristic Japan is on the march with an army apparently built from the blueprints of manga comics, and allies have their own tricks up their sleeve, and, well, the world just doesn't appear all that better off. It's stupid, with a capital S, but Red Alert 3 doesn't take any of this seriously, and neither should you. The story is told through the patented, over-the-top CNC live-action scenes. The upside here, other than the obvious camp factor, is that the cast is full of gorgeous women. Just shut your brain off and enjoy the ride. It's goofy, but fun. Our enemy was thrusting deeply into the Motherland's tender nether regions. The Empire's blockade has kept us from getting onto the island. We're now attempting emergency landing operation. If you've worked your way through CNC 3 recently, then you'll feel pretty comfortable with Red Alert 3. Gone are the Tiberium fields and hyper-futuristic units of the Brotherhood of Nod and GDI. Instead, you'll be collecting good old generic ore to power your armies, all of which appear to have been designed using the kitchen sink approach. There are some key differences between the three sides. The Soviets are slow to build, but their units favor brute force. The Allies use units that require a more tactical approach. The Japanese, who aren't tied to a power grid the way other sides are, specialize in rapid deployment over a large area. Whichever side you choose, you'll have plenty of time to play with all three during the 27 mission campaign. You'll be subjected to a hodgepodge of crazy soldiers, tanks, planes, ships, and giant robots, nearly all of which have a secondary special attack. Water now plays a very important role on most maps, and because of that, many buildings and units are amphibious, including the Allied battleship, which can crawl up onto the beach and take the fight right into the enemy base. It'll take more than that to stop us. One interesting new addition to the campaign is the ability to play through the missions with a friend. Each mission is designed to be played with two armies working together against a common foe. If you don't have a friend online to help you out, the computer kicks in with a reasonably competent AI commander. Once the campaign has played out and you've had your fill of the story, Red Alert 3 has a nice set of skirmish maps and an online matching system, so you can test out your tactics against some real flesh and blood opponents. Overall, there's plenty of content to satisfy your pointing and clicking obsession. <laughs> The gameplay in Red Alert 3 can only be described as a glorious mess. And that's both good and bad. One minute you'll be contending with Soviet war bears clawing at your troops, and the next you'll be ambushed by laser sword wielding samurai who hide in the ground. All of the bizarre situations you'll find your army in, and all of the amazing display of pyrotechnics that go off during each and every match can be thrilling. But figuring out just what each of these weird and wacky units are good for is tough, because their form doesn't immediately suggest a function. This is made extra difficult with the inclusion of secondary powers, which are accessed with the tap of the F key. Trying to coordinate your special shrink ray powers while the rest of your army executes an attack isn't easy, especially since the pace of the game is relentlessly fast. Just like in the lab! But the Red Alert series has never been about subtle tactics. You can generally get by if you focus on the inherent strengths of your side. And in this way, it's a little disappointing, because despite all the craziness going on in the game, the gameplay itself is a little too safe. Besides the cooperative nature of the game, which really doesn't add much of a wrinkle to the gameplay, there's nothing here that hasn't been explored in past CNC games. And some of the conventions feel woefully out of date. Resource collection is still done by placing a refinery near a mine on the map. But the game practically dictates that you put your refinery right next to the mine. Why not cut out the middleman and house the refinery directly on the mine? Do we really need those little ore collecting vehicles traveling all of six inches to and from the mine? Graphically, Red Alert 3 is up to snuff with all the other recent CNC games. That is, they look good and play well on current, but not necessarily bleeding edge hardware. It's got the usual dose of EA spit and polish, so if you're looking for a pretty RTS to brighten your day, Red Alert 3 fits the bill. Oddly enough, the major draw in the CNC games are the live action cutscenes. 
For Tiberium Wars, we had to endure reasonably competent actors delivering terrible lines with some semblance of conviction. My time machine. The actors enlisted for Red Alert 3 appear to be fully aware of the incredible stupidity of what they're being asked to portray. And since they're in on the joke, it's not that excruciating to watch Tim Curry butcher a Russian accent. Time is on our side. Or Jenny McCarthy wear clothes she probably shouldn't be wearing anymore. Oh, who knows what nightmares we have created. If the whole thing weren't so over the top, it would be insulting with the cheap sets, corny dialogue, and young actresses sporting low-cut shirts. Actually, it is kind of insulting, but we'll take it. Let me fight. Empress death to defy me. Many will go into Red Alert 3 with expectations based on their fond memories of the past games. It will not disappoint. It's big, loud, and crazy, and it's clearly not meant to be taken too seriously. But looking past the pageantry, the whole thing is a little too familiar. If you're looking for some innovation, or at the very least, a modest twist in your RTS, you're not going to find it here. The only thing I can say about that is, oh, snap!